Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. What has Dory Hoffman learned from being married to Mark Hoffman? I was really impressed and amazed with her answer. Be grateful for adversity. Wow. That's really interesting. Check out our conversation. So as, as you look, at, look back on I'm, what I'm hearing, uh, you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing is, as awful as this was, you've, you've come out as a better person. Mm-hmm. But as you look back on it now, especially this night before you got married, now, when did you get married again? It was September 14th, September 14th 1979. 1979. Okay, yeah. so 1979. So as you look back on that night, especially knowing what you know now, do you regret your decision? No. No? No. I don't regret it. So you, you, you're... I think I made the right choice, and the energy was there for me to go through with it. And this is the place where, um, when I give a lot, I give a lot of, I've done motivational speaking, I've been asked to be keynote speakers at, at the Emotional, uh, oh, what is it called, uh, Emotional Abuse Foundation. I've done a lot of, I've done a lot of speaking, and uh, which I couldn't, and that, that person who was there and couldn't have done that. But I've done a lot of speaking and there's people get up in church and say, Oh, I'm so sorry that this for this adversity. You know what? That adversity is important for us to have what we, to, to be able to learn what we came here to learn. And it's important. And don't, I don't, I don't know how to explain this very well. It's like, be grateful for the adversity. Yeah, in the book be grateful for the adversity. Cause it's because it's what's bringing you awareness. And it's bringing you to where you want to be, rather than saying, oh, no, no, that shouldn't have happened. The Book of Mormon tells us there must need to be opposition in all things. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, are, are, is that... Yeah. Is that kind of, kind of, yeah. Yeah, and it's because I know that it, I wouldn't be where I am today without that. And I am grateful for it. I am grateful for all those experiences. And I'm grateful that all the way through it, I can pinpoint places where I was assisted by that highest source. It. I had somebody ask me, are you still, it's like, do you, do you um, still have your testimony? And when I said yes, they were surprised. And it's like, I have been supported over and over and over through this whole thing by spirit. I know spirit now better than I did before this whole thing started. I have more of understanding, more of a awareness how much I'm loved, more of an awareness how much I am constantly with. I have a stronger testimony. And they're like, well, how could you have a stronger testimony? Look what happened here and here and here. Well, yeah, the, all the people in the church, including the leaders, have their own journey. And they get to look at their own actions and say, how did that happen? What did I, what, where do I need to change? Because if you don't make a choice and you don't see your, a result of your choice, you don't know, you don't know where you need to change. And that, that to me is the thing because we are here to evolve. We are here to change. We are here to recognize. We are here to realize who we are. And I hear this, I'm a child of God thing over and over and over, but do you really understand what that means? What do you really mean? get that? What does it mean? Mm-hmm. That means that when I go to a class and they have a lesson on the qu- characteristics of God, and they start listing all those characteristics of God that are on that, that those characteristics and those abilities and those gifts, those things that God has, I have too. That all the things that he can do, I can do too. And I need, and as I own that, and then as I practice how to do that, step by step, line upon line, that what is wanted is to be in the same place, to be, to have that experience. That's what we're being guided to do, to own that. And you have this, you, um, it's like we are to be gods, but then if you t- go to a class and say that in class, people are going to be aghast. Oh, no, they can't be. Oh, no. We have to, you have this um, hierarchy. We have God up here, and then maybe on the next line you have Christ and the angels, and maybe down here you have human beings. Guess what? God and Jesus Christ and all the prophets, everybody's on the same line. We're all on the same line. We're just different parts of the path. None of, no one's up and no one's down. We're all the same line. And that is not realized. I mean, the words are there, the concepts are there, but the realizations aren't there in the people. That right there is, that, that ticks me off. That ticks me off. <laughs> that pisses me off. It's like, no. But, but see, I didn't wait, get I'm, it either. <laughs> I'm, oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's, what's, what, what ticks you off. 
that there's this feeling of up and down. Oh, the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. kind of so the pro you listen to the prophet. Well, it's like the prophet speaking, so we need to listen. Well, I get, you know, I think that's true. What is the prophet saying? What do I need to hear? Is that in alignment with what I'm getting? Now, now Brigham Young said, he had a quote saying, this is where I'm speaking as a prophet. Here's where I'm speaking as a man. So are you looking at that and saying, is he speaking as a prophet? Is he speaking as a man? Is when he's speaking and saying, this is what we're asking members to do, as I check in and say, okay, what part of that is true for me? Rather than automatically saying, well, I have to do that. Checking in for ourselves. We're not, I, it's like the concepts are there, but there's this veil, there's this something, there's this line, this glass ceiling that it's not really being taught to people how powerful you are. And I, I remember being five years old, <laughs> five years old and wondering, how come we're not being taught how to walk on water in church? Okay. That's a really good question. Why aren't we? Why aren't we? And guess what? I have a school that I'm creating that we're going to do that. <laughs> I've started a school. <laughs> You're going to teach people how to walk. Yes. Oh wow. And, and is that not way? that not that I know that. See, okay, here's what I'm here's what I'm saying. The things that I have wanted to know, I'm going to teach in the school. I mean, I'm going to have taught in the school. I'm going to find the teachers that can teach that. Not that I'm teaching it myself, but it's like, why aren't we being taught these things? Because that is what we need to be taught. I mean, is this like a, a, a class to build faith? Is that what you're It's saying? not building faith. The faith is, our, it's like you come in with the faith. It's about truly, truly having the experience of that. Now, when Jesus said to, I guess it was Peter, and I say I can't remember exactly. I think it was Peter when he said, you have a little faith too. He was having Peter, trying to get Peter to walk on the water, mm -hmm. and Peter didn't. And he's like, you have a little faith. It's like, this is what is wanted for us. It's wanted for us to be able to express ourselves in these abilities. And when you have people, I have a, I'm in the um, uh, interest right now of looking at, I call what's really going on. Now, this isn't even history. This isn't the history part, but this is my life. History, or the, my life of who am I? It's like when I said, who are you? That, who's telling me I don't need to do this? Who are you? Who am I? And I hear this paranormal. Oh, that's paranormal. Guess what? That paranormal separates us, us, us up away from everyone is psychic. Everyone has all of these abilities, but we have to see where am I? Where am I with this? What level am I with this? What do I? And then how do I get line upon line? That we can walk on water. Why couldn't? Why can't we? Because we haven't had, we haven't had someone else tell us. Christ told us, but then, well. What I hear is like, oh, he's Christ, so he can do that, and he's this and this and that. He's different, he's separate, he's... No, that's not the truth. Why aren't we? Why aren't we doing that? Because we have the ability. That's what I say about the, those church lessons and you hear about God. We are everything that we... All the attributes, we have. We have all of those. But we just haven't learned how to express them. That's what I'm about. Okay. That's where I get my passion, and I was like, get all excited. Ah! But that's what, yeah, that's what I have. I have a school that I have open. That I've, I have one student so far, and that's okay. me. <laughs> but I, right. yeah, it's there. So what I gather from from <clears throat> listening to you is, it sounds like um, as awful as this experience was, what you learned from it is to trust yourself. Yes. Is that, is that your biggest yes. lesson? Yes. I first, well, and it was different stages. First of all, I remember. Um, it was on a Friday that Mark went to prison. And I remember Sunday, okay, Sunday, do I go to church? Do I go to church on Sunday? And it's like, no, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to do that again. I remember being so angry at God for this. How did you let this happen to me? I'm not going to church anymore ever again. I remember having that thought, feeling, having that feeling. And sitting there, and I remember sitting there on the floor, just going, you know what? I, yeah, I'm done with this. I'm not. I'm just, was, I was angry, angry at God. And being, having the, having the, coming to my mind, having, hearing the voice of, and having, a, hearing laughter. Like you laugh at a two year, when, when your two year old is doing something that the parents are just thinking is so cute, but they're, they're being really intense. That's what it felt like. This father was saying to this two year old who's saying, I don't want to go to church anymore, get up, go to church. 
And I, that, was my, that was what I was told to do, get up and go to church. And so it's like, okay, I guess I could just stay mad. Or I can get up and go to church. And so I did. I ended up being late, walking in the back of the cultural hall, the cultural hall and all the people in hearing this, Dory's here, Dory's here, Dory's here, Dory's here, Dory's here, Dory's here, Dory's here. So the whole thing was just like, ah, uh, people didn't know what, they didn't quite know what to do because I was there. So uh, had you not been attending <clears throat> No, previously? I had been. Oh, you had been. But see, this whole big thing happened on Friday. Where, he, where Mark he was arrested and all, everything was everyone was watching, and, and so nobody expected you to come. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think they did. And I was late because I wasn't going to come because I determined I'm not going to go again. But then I felt that spirit and felt that laughter going, "Come on, get up. Okay, you're okay. Go to church." And uh, yeah, I had that. And and but I had it. It's. There's that, I think it's Dickens, where he says, it's the best of times, it's the worst of times. This whole thing, this whole life that I lived with Mark and, and then after with the repercussions has been where the best of times and the worst of times. Horrendous, terrible things happen because I, I went to church. Yeah, I got up and went to church, and I was told that I was contaminating the church. I needed to leave by a person who was so angry at me that I was like, you, are content you need to leave. And then the bishop being so upset and angry. Wait, wait, wait. Somebody told you that you needed to leave? Mm, yes. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding. Oh. And then the bishop being so upset because someone told him. I I was kind of in a I didn't care. It's like it didn't even bother me. I was just like, I was feeling it's like so numb and so, um, I don't know, emotionally just just numb. I don't like any, anything to say about that, but the, all that had happened. It takes a while to process all of the information, all the stuff that's gone on, and I hadn't, it's like this big clump of all this experience that hadn't even, I hadn't even been able to go through emotionally all the stuff. Um, yeah, they did. And the bishop pulled me in the office, and he's like, if you, do, if you don't come to this church every week, I'm going to be so mad at you. It's like, you do not believe that woman. He was so, he was really angry that 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 he was such a he was very supportive bishop angry that that woman had said that but i have i have had um and it continues to this day because B mark's not around he's in prison he's gone i'm the one i'm the one that's gotten the letters i'm the one that's gotten the phone calls i'm the one that's been told i never don't ever speak to me again i can't be your friend anymore i'm the one that's been had all this talk i'm the one that has the state pre the state president wouldn't shake my hand you know i thought all these things happened by people members of the church yes so I've had that. Then I've had people who are so awesome, so loving, who, who I go to the grocery store, and I remember being in the grocery store counting. It's like, how much money do I have? How much money? Because I'm now four kids, single, a single person, single mom, even though I was technically married for a while. No, it's like no money. Where's money coming from? No. Sitting in the store with little money going, what can I buy? What can I buy? And having this woman come by and say, here, handing me money, handing me $50, and saying, go buy groceries. So I've had, I have both extremes. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dory Olds. In our next conversation, I'll ask her what she thought when that third bomb went off. Did she think Mark was guilty or innocent? I didn't believe he was capable of it. I did not believe this. People say, well, do you think he was innocent? Yes, I did think he was innocent. Even though I had these little things inside myself that say something's off, something's off, something's off, I believed he was innocent. I hope you enjoyed that short clip from our next interview. If you'd like to hear the entire interview uncut, please go to our patreon.com slash gospel tangents and subscribe for just $5 a month. If you'd like a transcript of this, please click the yellow subscribe button at gospeltangents.com and I'll send you this and all future transcripts. Also, if you'd like a paperback like we've got here, those are available at our website at amazon.com. Just do a search for gospel tangents. Please get all updates at our Facebook page at facebook.com slash gospel tangents. We're also on Twitter at gospel tangents. You can also get transcripts individually at our website, gospeltangents.com slash shop. Finally, make sure that you subscribe on our Apple podcast page. Just do a quick search for uh, gospel tangents there and give us a five star review while you're at it. Thanks again for listening. Your support helps create more Mormon history classes and podcasts such as this. And so I really appreciate you listening. Please share with your friends. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript, and over here you'll see some more of our great videos. Thanks again.